The plot is thickening around NBA media rights. Plus, media upfronts are providing a look at how important sports are to the major media companies. F1 posted big viewership numbers in Miami, and later we'll hear from Flavor Flav. Seriously. It's Wednesday, May 8th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. The upfronts are coming. Media companies are making their presentations to advertisers and selling off some of their ad inventory for the coming months. It's a time when we get a snapshot of where the value is in media, and sports are taking an increasingly prominent role as one of the few ways to get a large audience watching the same thing at the same time. In past years, sports programming accounted for around 25% of the ad space sold at the upfronts, but NBC exec Peter Lazarus believes that that could grow to 40% this year and could reach 50% two years from now. Part of that is the growth in female viewership, which has risen along with the audience for women's sports. Streaming services are working in more ads as they draw bigger numbers, and Amazon is finding more ways to combine its functions as a major media network and the Everything Store to allow you to add things to your cart while you watch. The biggest question mark heading into the upfronts is the entity nicknamed Spulu, the combined venture of Disney, Fox, and Warner Bros. Discovery, which still doesn't have a name or a subscription price and is months from being launched, but executives are still looking to see what kind of appetite advertisers have for a service that will have a huge package of sports rights if it ever gets off the ground. Formula One went into the Miami Grand Prix amid murmurs that it was peaking in the U.S. The Netflix effect was wearing off, local businesses in Vegas weren't happy with how the race there hurt their sales, and Verstappen wins every time anyway, so do people really want to invest two hours in watching that happen? But in Miami, McLaren's Lando Norris eked out a victory, and coverage of the race averaged 3.1 million viewers on ABC, which is a record for F1 in the U.S. A big reason why is that the race was on ABC. Most F1 races are on one of Disney's other networks, namely ESPN or ESPN2. Either way, Miami showed that Americans still love F1, and that once in a while, someone not named Max wins the race. As we approach the one-quarter mark of the baseball season, let's take a look at team attendance. The Dodgers remain the biggest draw in baseball, combining the country's second biggest market with a star-studded team. Their average of 46,000 and change is over 7,000 above the next team. And any guesses as to who that second-place team is? It's not the Yankees. They are fifth behind the Phillies in third and the Braves in fourth. The team second to the Dodgers in attendance are also second to them in the AL West, that being the San Diego Padres. Yes, it's nicer to be outside in San Diego than most other places in April, but the Padres finished third in average home attendance last year behind the Dodgers and Yankees. They are one of the best examples out there of fans rewarding a team that spends on good players and performs well on the field. Ten years ago, the Padres had the 20th highest attendance in baseball, only a shade higher than the 24th biggest draw that year, the Oakland A's. Since 2014, the Padres have lifted their attendance by 43%, from 27,103 to 38,646. The A's, meanwhile, have disaffected their fans in every way possible in their last year in the city and are drawing an average of 6,234, which is one quarter of what they had in 2014. The Padres and A's have almost the same record this year, but only one team seems to want their fans to watch. NBA media rights talks are heating up. Joining me now to discuss is front office sports tuned in columnist Mike McCarthy. Welcome, Mike. Great to be here, Owen. Great to have you. So my first big question is, is TNT going to be able to keep some slice of the NBA going forward? Owen, TNT has a major battle on its hands. Uh, NBC is currently challenging the incumbent TNT for the third media package. We already know or we're pretty sure that the first two are going to go to ESPN and Amazon. That means it's going to be either TNT or NBC for the third package. And believe me, NBC has given it all they've got. Don't forget, they were the former uh, rights partner of uh, the NBA during the golden years, during the Michael Jordan years. Michael Jordan, in fact, won all six of his titles on NBC's airwaves. So they are really pushing TNT hard. And it's an either-or thing, right? There's no fourth package where one of them can get a little slice? Yeah, anything's possible. Uh, you know, the... Negotiations are extremely fluid. And don't forget, there's a 40-year relationship between TNT and the NBA. They are joined at the hip like this. They have the best studio show uh, in history with Inside the NBA with Charles Barkley and company. So, I mean, for the NBA to not want to be in business with TNT, which has been really the gold standard for NBA coverage, that is really going to be a hard decision. So is it possible? Uh, maybe. 
what I'm hearing from the NBC side is they don't want to split a package. You know, they don't want to split the baby here. They want to come back in a big way, the NBA on NBC, not just have a few games with TNT. So if I had to make a bet, Owen, I would think that there won't be a split package. And in a world where uh, NBC gets the rights and TNT does not, TNT, of course, signed all these, you know, their their big four, Barkley, Shaq, Kenny Smith, Ernie Johnson, to contract extensions was a couple years ago. Um, what happens to those guys if if there is no NBA on TNT? Well, I think uh, the show goes away. Uh, we actually reported last week that Barkley had an opt-out clause in his contract in just such an occasion that when he re-signed his deal in 2022, he added a clause that said, if we lose the NBA, I can become a free agent and walk. And guess what? You know, uh, Charles went on uh, TV the next day and explained it, I think, brilliantly to Dan Patrick why he did that uh, and why he thinks that the show probably couldn't continue. And the main reason, he said, because Ernie Johnson is a TNT lifer and that Ernie would stay with TNT. And if Ernie doesn't go with Barkley and company to wherever the show or the rebuilt show would go, then it's not the same inside the NBA. And that also makes me wonder, does NBC have enough in-house talent to, you know, do their own NBA and NBC thing? Um, or would they be looking to, you know, bring in a Barkley or a someone to, to have kind of be the the front guy or the, the rabble rouser of their coverage? Well, if Charles Barkley becomes a free agent, this business is going to go up. And I mean up in smoke. You're going to have the biggest free agent bidding war for a TV, sports TV talent ever. You're going to have NBC going after him. You're going to have Amazon going after him. And don't forget ESPN, which has been slobbering over Sir Charles for 20 years. You know, as he uh, dusted one NBA countdown cast after another. So it, it would be tremendous. It, it would be a huge bidding war. I think the only thing I can compare it to is the previous bidding wars 20 years ago, 25 years ago for John Madden. Uh, any any insight as to Shaq, Kenny Smith? Um, I mean, Shaq feels like he could just kind of, you know, just go be a DJ if he felt like it. But um, you know, are those two uh, also going to be hot commodities? Yeah, I think whoever, you know, gets the NBA, particularly if it's a new partner, would love to hire Shaq and would love to hire Kenny. Uh, I just don't know if it's feasible. Uh, Shaq, as you know, is a billionaire just from all his endorsements and He's got this Reebok gig. So he's got a million different things. He doesn't have to do TV. And Kenny Smith has spoke for years about one day running an NBA team as a GM. And think, I think in fact, he's had a few uh, interviews for that. So I hate to say it and don't, you know, at me for this. <laughs> but if TNT loses the NBA, I think that's, you know, uh, finito for the show that we all know and love and, my prediction is only Barkley goes on to another network. Yeah, that makes enough sense. And how about Amazon? I mean, they're, um, you know, this is just a, another notch in their you know, growing list of, of major sports properties. Um, how do you think they will approach NBA coverage? Well, the thing about Amazon is they take a very traditional approach. And I think what they'll do with the NBA is very similar to what they did with the NFL, which is they, they worked with traditional networks. They went out and hired mainstream commentators, experts from the business that they were conquering, and had them build a new show, which is Thursday Night Football and Prime Times, Thursday Night's pregame coverage and all that. So who do you have on that show? You know, you've got Al Michaels, who is as mainstream as he can get, and Kirk Herbstreet from ESPN, and all these other, you know, very traditional folks that we've seen for a million years on ESPN and Fox and all these other places. So I think if Amazon does get it, they're going to follow that blueprint uh, for the NBA. And why not? It's been very successful. The in-season tournament was, you know, created to be this kind of standalone media package that could be sold as its own thing. Anything you're hearing on how they might treat that uh, in these negotiations? I think that's going to be, you know, just folded into one of the packages. Uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be a separate standalone for that. I mean, I could be wrong. As I said, these negotiations are extremely fluid and they seem to change every day. But I, I think that's more of a goodie than a standalone where the NBA could come to, say, uh, come to the networks and say, hey, you know, look at this standalone. That's done pretty good numbers the last couple of years. You know, let's use this to put this over the top. 
my big prediction is this. I predict, Owen, that the NBA will double its rights fees, which is amazing considering that the rights market is very stressed right now. The economy is teetering on, on the verge of recession. So I, I think the NBA is going to come out of this really good. And for the Disney end of this, ESPN, ABC, should we just be expecting pretty much status quo other than, yeah, close to double in what they're paying? No, I don't think there's going to be status quo. I think Disney is going to end up paying more for less. There's going to be less NBA games on their networks. That's, you know, a given that everybody's telling me. And if that changes, I'd be very shocked. However, for Disney's standpoint, ES standpoint, they keep the crown jewel, which is they keep the NBA finals on ESPN, ABC. That was the big uh, must have for them. And they seem to have accomplished that. So I would look for the NBA finals to be on ABC, on broadcast television for the next decade. Yeah, fascinating. And before I let you go, just uh, anything else you, you'd throw in there into, into this mix? Anything else we should be watching out for? Yeah, I'm still wondering if there's a, another party out there that comes crashing in at the last minute. I mean, every time there's a, a big negotiation like this, there's always like a big surprise at the end. Like somebody you didn't expect, like an Apple or a Google or YouTube to come, you know, winging it in. I mean, they certainly have the money if they want. And how often do, does the NBA become available? Every 10 years. So if you want to take a shot at it, this is your chance. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm surprised that you know Amazon seems to have been anointed the the streaming winner already. I mean, you know, maybe they they've just got the money and they've shown they can do it with the NFL. And yeah, I guess why not? But still, yeah, Google's out there. Netflix at one point was kind of lingering around the edges, but um, Netflix is Amazon the makes no sense. Sports for the last two days, right on with the <laughs> Brady roast. I mean, right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how far of a step is it going from Tom Brady to getting a live uh, NBA package? And, yeah. uh, you know, Amazon has shown that people will come to streaming and, and watch it. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I still think there's going to be some big twist at the end that's going to blow everybody's heads off. Mike McCarthy, thanks so much for joining us. All right. Thanks. All right. Thrilled to be joined by the one and only Flavor Flav. Welcome, Flav. How you doing? I'm killing Owen. How you doing, man? I'm fantastic. I, I'm doing great. Um, so let's start with uh you're sponsoring the US women's water polo team. Tell me how that all happened. Hey, well, you, let me tell you like this, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean, when it comes down to women's sports, you know what I'm saying, in the whole nine, sometimes a lot of people do overlook those sports, you know what I'm saying? And and I mean, these women are out there giving their best. They're trying their hardest. You know what I'm saying? And, and not only that, but they're winning gold medals like crazy. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, their sport needs to be a little bit more paid attention to. You know, I feel like their sport is kind of, you know, forgotten about. You know what I'm saying? In the whole nine. And I ain't going to lie, but, I mean, these, these you got some real good athletes out there, man, in this water polo game. I'm telling you. And a lot of people are sleeping on the water polo sport, you know. So, so there's a lot of people that want want a chance, you know what I'm saying, and they want to feel like they have a chance, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing, man, for these for this women's polo team, you know what I'm saying, water polo team, you know what I'm saying, because I want them to feel what it's like to have that chance, you know. Let them know, hey, listen, don't worry. I got your back, y'all. Don't even worry about it. I see what y'all doing out there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to step up. I got y'all back. Don't worry about it. Flavor, flavor. I got y'all back, G. And this this year, y'all going to win the gold medal. How would you compare a sports crowd, maybe at a playoff game or something where everyone's really hyped, to a hip-hop show? Well, there's no comparison because, you know, it's all total different. It's all totally different. You know, the energy is totally different in each in each arena. In a sports arena, the energy is a whole lot more different than a hip-hop concert arena. So there's no real-life comparison. It, it depends on who the, who the fuck you're going to see. If you're going to see somebody that's more exciting than a hockey game, then this shit is going to be more exciting than a hockey game. But sometimes people may go to a hockey game instead of going to see 
somebody. You're you're uh, sponsoring this this women's water polo team. Do you ever think about like getting involved like with a team, like maybe like owning a slice of a team or or having like some formal role with you know like a WNBA and WSL? I I I haven't went that far. I haven't thought that far. I mean, you know, um, um, I don't know. Maybe it could be a thought for the future. You know, maybe maybe it could be a thought for the future. But right now, my main goal, you know what I'm saying, is is just to help out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's my main goal, man. My main goal is to give back. You know what I'm saying? And that's all I want to do is give back. And 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 I'm gonna tell you something. Not too many people are do uh, are doing what I'm doing. And I think there's a lot more people, a lot more celebs, and ev- everything that needs to come to the to the table, man, by like Flav and sponsor some some women's sports. Yeah, well, oh, um, before we let you bounce, uh, if you want, like, you can drop some rhymes for us if you want a little Flavor Flav action on this podcast. Flavor Flav, hype man, chameleon, won't stop rocking till I get about a zillion, 1.5 just to come up in your building, got old money just to leave for my children, kill a small talk, son, this is how I'm feeling, VH1 checks all the way to the ceiling side for y'all that's too revealing yeah it's like that your boy is still appealing you want to know my swag right now it's just a feeling just on ringtones i'm gonna do about a million love my shorties puerto ricans black sicilian flavor killing the club and yes i'm making a killing flavor flav you still got it folks thanks so much for joining us on the show absolute pleasure all right, no doubt, man. Enjoy this interview, man. You know what I'm saying? And I want everybody that see this interview to enjoy this interview. This is going to be one of the best of the year, boy. That's it for today. Subscribe. You never know what you're going to get on the show. Sometimes I don't either. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>